lately the fulani have been demonized it's always something negative you hear in every culture you find some bad elements it's true and yes perhaps maybe there are some bad elements if you get to know the fulani people they are gentle people did you have to spend time researching some things before because i yes. see how you try to represent the royal cultures yes. the palace in marua and all of that in the novel uh, you know how much research did you put in well, I did a lot of research. Culture is one important way of encountering people. But whenever we talk culture, often we remove, really, when we talk ethnicity, we remove culture from it, and it's always the political. It's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie that has said such a thing in the past that whenever we talk ethnicity, we're always talking about it in the political sense of who gets what, but we don't really encounter the people's culture which humanizes them. Over time, we then tend to go into contestations because we do not understand each other, we do not understand each other's culture. And one way of encountering cultures is through the arts. Today, we're going to talk about one art form that you already know about, a lot of you, is a novel art form. And we have a novelist with us in the studio. The novel we're going to talk about comes from the Fulani, the Bororo culture, the Fulani uh, culture. And we're going to meet that writer because it's important. In our current conversation in Nigeria, everyone talks about the Fulani, but we do not really want to understand where the Fulani culture comes from. And that's why this novel called Fanta is very important. And the author, Hadiza Bagudu, is here with us at Onakwea TV. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I've encountered you a long time ago uh, through your collection of poetry. And this time we're talking uh, okay. this beautiful novel. And tell us a little about yourself, first of all. Okay. Um, my name is Hadiza Baguru, obviously. My, my, I was born in Yola, Adamawa State. My mother is Fulani from Yola, while my father is Nupe from Niger State. Mm -hmm. But I grew up among the Fulani in Adamawa, so I have a, well, I would say a very deep understanding of the Fulani culture. Okay. So, because of how I grew up. Okay, yeah. interesting. <laughs> now, this here is the story of Hayab, um, you know, and the girl Panta. Yes. You know, they, it's a love story, but at the same time, it's set in the royal uh, yes. setting. Yes, he's an aristocrat. He's an aristocrat, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How, how did this come about? What was the inspiration behind it? Well, like I said, I grew up in among the Fulanis and I was lucky enough to meet my grandmother who is always telling me stories, you know, of her childhood and I got inspired by that. And so I've always wanted to write something on the Fulani culture. And when I, along the way, I got inspired to write this. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, you in this fanta is a, you say is a it's, it's a full name it's a, full it's a variation of the name fatima fatima yes okay yeah. i love the way uh, the fulani always have their own variations of the islamic names yeah, yes ibrahim yeah. you yes. say iro yeah. uh, um, mariam nero <laughs> even my name hadiza is khadija that's the real pronunciation oh. but fulani call it hadiza oh. yes. why does that happen I think it's easier for them to pronounce it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, Khadija, not everybody can go with yeah. the Kha, you yeah. know. <laughs> so. the, um, when you were building this, did, it, did you find any, like, a sense of you're representing a culture that is not very well known? Because you are talking about the Bororo yes, Fulani. Yes. Tell us about the Bororo, really. 
the Bororo, they are the they are a variation of the Fulani. Fulani is a broader term. It encompasses different subsects of the uh, culture, but Bororo, they are the purer form of that particular tribe because they haven't been they mar intermarry among them. They they marry each other, as in they marry cousin, you know, cousins marriage. So they don't intermarry with other cultures, and they have managed to keep their culture intact probably because they don't stay long enough in a place to be able to mix with other people they are always on the move so they protect their values they protect you know everything their tradition so if the bororo that you see today and the bororo 1000 years ago they are almost identical because they have they hardly change although lately i see some of them embracing modern culture you know, little by little, but it's mostly the ones that are starting to settle down. You know, but if you meet those ones that are always on the move, they are the same. Okay. So, if you really want to know about the history of the, just watch the pure Bororo, you know, you see the real Fulani culture. And I would like to say also that lately, the Fulani have been demonized. They have, oh my God, in the media, they have been, it's always something negative you hear. And I'm not, I'm not here trying to say that some of them, because in every culture you find some bad elements, it's true. And yes, perhaps maybe there are some bad elements, but they have been so demonized. If you get to know the Fulani people, they are gentle people. And, you know, they, they have a, they, they have this, uh, camaraderie type of culture where they, they how will I even put it? They, they have this, uh, they respect family, they respect family, they respect friendship, they have this um, integrity. Yeah. So, but you don't hear that. Yeah. You don't hear that uh, a lot in the news. It's always about something bad. So, and most people now, when they see Fulani, they just associate them with, you know, terrorism, terrorism. And it's not their, culture it's not their normal behavior something pushed them to eat exactly. so did you feel that burden that yes I really yes, want to yes. sh share about these people yes that people that... when i was writing it it was mostly because of the way the bororo have been treated you know people make fun make fun of them you know in, in every two three jokes you hear one bororo yeah. joke as they may make them sound as if they are illiterate or something like that they are not they may not have the western education but that doesn't mean they are illiterate and that doesn't mean they are stupid mm -hmm. but people make jokes about them so that's why i wanted to like really bring it out because my grandmother she's bororo she's okay. from the bororo tribe and she's one of the most intelligent people i know she's a full and new scholar. she's a islamic scholar mm -hmm. so but uh, now um the reason why now i'm taking the marketing of this book uh, i'm giving it publicity now is because of what is happening now because of where the fulani are now you know like i said most people when they just hear fulani they just get scared oh terrorists terrorists and it's not like that what has been responsible? Okay, like I come from Benin, right? The there's the huge conflict with the Tiv of late. But if you look at the history, the Tiv particularly and the Fulani have been very close. Some incident happened to us in 2007. We were traveling from Yola, I mean, we were traveling all around the northern states, but from Yola to uh, go, go heading towards Borno, and we uh, inadvertently hit some Okada person, you know? And my colleague who was traveling with me, when this thing was becoming a big issue, by the time we reached the police station, his brother called just to find out how's your journey. And he spoke to you. And they, all these Okada people say, what, you are Tiv? They don't Tiv in it. And that's how, they say, I, we and Tiv have been brothers from way back. We, we don't fight each other. We can have a little squabble, but we only settle ourselves. What do you think accounts for this sudden transition now where, for example, in Benue, the, 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 the narrative now is Steve and Fulani do not see eye to eye. What's that? Okay, you see Fulani, like I said, they are always on the move. Yeah. So in every state that you go, you meet some of them. There you meet some of the Bororo, but the settle and the nomads yeah. okay and whenever wherever they go 
they assimilate, they, they, they make friends with the people there. They have this uh, relationship. Even if they don't settle, they have a kind of relationship with the people. Yeah. And it's always a peaceful one. Yeah. Okay? In, there's always some bad elements. Mm. Maybe some, some people let their cows yeah. enter some farmlands yeah. and cause damage, and they didn't apologize. Mm. Of course, you know, little things like that can escalate. Yeah. And even in history, there have always been little squabbles like that. Yeah. But after a while, maybe the village heads will come in, you know, yeah. compensation and everything will die down. Yeah. But with democracy, with mm. politics, mm. You know, these are our politicians. I'm sorry, I am not trying to accuse anybody, but you have to admit that since democracy started, mm. that's when all these uh, intertribal clashes have escalated. Mm. Because the politi politicians, they take advantage of this thing. Something that is supposed to happen within a short time and die down, but they will make it seem as if, oh, this one is this tribe, that one is that tribe. Mm. Next thing you know, the thing will now be escalating. Mm. In some places, like in Kaduna, Cattle rustling is an issue. We all know that Erufa has been fighting that issue. What happens, some people, some bad elements, I'm not going to call any tribe, but mm. some bad elements in some culture, they will go attack the Fulani. Like, mm. remember, the Fulani, they are peaceful. They don't have weapons, they don't have anything. So they will go and attack them, kill them, take their cows. We all know that Bororo especially, cows are their life. It's their livelihood, it's their, it's their everything. You now kill them. And so the other youth that, are, that survive, they will come for revenge. And things like that, they don't die down easily. And again, when you add politics to it, it keeps escalating and escalating. It's the same story everywhere you go. It's these little, little things that escalated. Okay, so uh, let me not go very much on the political. I'll come back to mm -hmm. literature. Mm -hmm. What what was your writing style in terms of like? Did you have to spend a time researching some things before? Because I yes. see how you try to represent the royal yes. cultures, the yes. the uh, mm -hmm. the um the palace in Marua and all of that in 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 the novel. Mm -hmm. You know, how much research did you put in? Well, I did a lot of research. I did. I went. I went through historical books. I asked questions. I visited even some of the royal palaces to have a feel for them, and also with the knowledge that I have of growing up, you know, I put everything together. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. But then, when putting them together, as a as a mother and all of that. Was that process easy? Well, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. But I try to carve out time for myself every day to write. Okay. You know, and I protect that time. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like what time? Mostly in the mornings. Okay. When I take my children to school, I come back. Mm. I have a little free time. I sit down and write. Sometimes if I have time in the evening, I write a little bit more. Okay. Mm. What's your most comfortable genre? Because you have books like this uh, melody, uh, which is like, well, I don't know which one I'll call the most latest, because this is 2014, but re, yeah, re, the second 20, edition, 2022. 22 edition, yeah. but this is 2018 18 melody. Yes. melody. Yeah. And then you've got poetry. Um, um, what's your favorite genre? Prose, obviously, ah. prose. But we, we knew you first with poetry. Yeah, I do. I love poetry. I enjoy it. Mm. I am a romantic. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I prefer telling a story. Okay. Mm. And, well, you can tell a story using poems as well. Exactly. But I haven't gotten exactly. to that yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll go on a break and then we'll, we'll be back and, you know, continue the conversation regarding uh, Fanta particularly. Okay. All right. So uh, for those of you watching us on YouTube, uh, please um, share this video. And then if you can subscribe to our channel, I'm going to say thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And if you are watching us on NTA Makodi, um, we are on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Akoya TV. So you go on there, you subscribe to our channel. Again, I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. What's up, what's up, what's up, people? My name is Solomon Lange, and you're watching Aquatic. 
God bless you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ochaya Odofu. I am the founder of Aquaya Children Carnival. Watch Aquaya TV. I'm a Veronica Uchidu. And I'm Aquaya TV. I'm Aquaya TV. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Thank you very much for subscribing to our channel and for sharing the video. And we have been having this conversation with the poet and uh, novelist, uh, Hadiza Bagudu, who has written a novel or has reissued uh, her novel, Fanta, and we've been discussing relating to this work and why she reissued it. If you are not aware, this is the work we're talking about. Can you see? Fanta. Okay, so um, you, in promoting this work, what, what's the response so far from the public? You know, you've done a reading and yeah. things yeah. like that. Most people that have read it loved it. Yeah. And they also point, uh, pointed out the fact that I try to bring out the Fulani culture to the public. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they were even the ones that suggested that I make it known Mm -hmm. about uh, why it's important mm -hmm. for people to read it, mm -hmm. you know, to how to understand mm -hmm. what is happening now. Yeah. Because, like I said, the Fulani have been so demonized and it's not fair, mm -hmm. you know. There is much more to the what we hear on the, mm -hmm. than what we hear on media. Mm -hmm. So at least when people read the book Fanta, they will understand, they will see how the culture, how beautiful the Fulani culture yeah. is and what they are about. Okay. Yeah. We, you, in uh, the Sharo, for his example, yes. um, where yeah. someone is trying to take a bride and he has to receive a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> flogging. <laughs> flogging. Yeah. Um, you, you portrayed that uh, beautifully here. Why did you think that poem was important? Did you? It, I, I'm asking that question again because you particularly referred to the objectification of men as against the objectification of women, which meant that you were trying to mm -hmm. relate with some modern construct of gender. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, ah, the Sharo is also uh, Babarika. Why did you talk someone? So I was wondering how it, why did you think it's important to Portray. Well, it's important because the shadow itself is unique to mm -hmm. the Fulani culture. However, uh, in every culture, they have guidelines mm -hmm. and, you know, how they have guidelines for how a man mm -hmm. can acquire a wife. Mm -hmm. You don't just, it's not like now that, you know, women are just so easy to get. In mm -hmm. every culture, before you get a wife, mm -hmm. you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. In some cultures like the Zuru, right? Yeah. Before you, you are given a wife, you have to work for the father for almost okay. seven, to seven to eight years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get that wife, you value her very well. Mm -hmm. In some cultures, you have to, I saw one culture where they will, Put something, I think a heavy stone on your back. <laughs> if you cannot carry that stone, you cannot carry a wife, something like that. Mm. So for the full I need their own version is the flogging. Young men, mm. you know, will come out, you know, they will, of course, you know, they will prepare themselves way ahead of time. Yes. And they will get, you know, hit with this, their stick. Yes. And it's very painful because it can really tear your back. Yes. So, but if you can endure the pain without showing any act, kind, uh, any type of cowardice, yes. you endure it fine you get the wife. And even before you go for that shadow, you don't just come out like that and then automatically you get a wife. No. Okay. You have to get the woman first to actually want you. Okay. Then you now go and do the shadow for her. So, and that's where uh, the beautification, the objectification yes. comes in. The men beautify themselves. They braid their hair. They, I mean, when the shoe is on the other foot, <laughs> you know, even when they are dancing, you see them opening their eyes yeah. and their teeth. They're actually trying to show that my eyes are white. I don't have any disease. <laughs> so, you know, and the women, you know, they have this I think it's actually interesting. I think it's good for uh, the women. They have this power because sadly, most cultures are against women. I'm sorry, but most cultures are like that. You see, the women are like subservient, but it's not like that in the Fulani culture. Okay. They have this status. They are given this high status. Okay. Yeah. So, so th this means polygamy must, is not likely to be 
in the Bororo yeah. culture, you hardly see polygamy. It's mm -hmm. one man. I mean, it's not easy getting even the one <laughs> wife. Some men, they don't even get the wife. So it's very small, but it's very, it's not common. Mm -hmm. But in the settled full, and you know, the yeah. more people settle, they start to adopt other culture. Yeah. They start to mix. And then you find a lot of polygamy in the settled full. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when, did you, did you experience that yourself? I think. The shadow? Yeah. Well, I have been to the village, okay. so I saw something similar to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, part of it is food. The food, the food, and it's all, it, there's a lot of it surrounding uh, uh, yes, milk yes. and fura. And, yes. uh, oh. Because the cows, they are with their cows all the oh, time. Okay. So mostly their food consists of dairy products. Mm. Uh, and you know, there's this guinea corn, you call it fura, mm -hmm. that they make mm -hmm. to eat it, so to yeah. balance it out. Yeah. However, in the settled Fulani, the major, like in Yola, they are made the, the food that they are known with is Nyeri uh, Marori, they have Koboko, I even mentioned it in the book, that's Kuan Shinkafa and Mian Kuka. So they are the only ones that make that combination. Other cultures still have Mian Kuka, but they eat it with mostly. Dawa, masala, and the rest, but Fulani, they mm. specifically mix it with rice. Mm. Yes. And you said the name is? Nyiri Marori. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm asking that because let people know the distinct, the distinct name of Fufu they, as a mm. language. Yeah. You know? And in, in, where the, the, in Yola, that's mm. where you hear people speaking Fulani. It's mm. like the lingua franca there. Mm. Everybody speaks Fulani yes. there. Even non, in fact, in Yola, because they are so settled there, I think Fulani is about 20 to 30 percent of the population there. Mostly they are the other cultures there. Okay. But because they are so intermingled, you, you can hardly tell the difference. Mm. When you go there, you see, especially Achama and Kilba, mm. they are not Fulani, but when you see them, they look Fulani. They, in fact, they even look more Fulani than some Fulanis, <laughs> and they speak fluently, so you can't even tell the difference. However, in other states, Sokoto, Sokoto, by the way, the seat of the caliphate, where you, so you are supposed to find most of the Fulani, you yeah. find mostly Hausa there. Mm -hmm. Or people that claim to be Fulani, but they can't even speak Fulani. Mm -hmm. You know, you find many there. Kano, too. A lot of people, they say they are Fulani, but they don't even know one word of Fulani. <laughs> so, yeah. So, do you have an identity? What you, so because you grew up with the Fulani, you think of yourself more as Fulani, but your father yes. is Nupe. Yes, my father is Nupe. Isn't there some mix of Fulani in Nupe also? Very well, very well. Yeah. My father actually he comes from the royal family of the Nupe, and the royal family, if you trace their ancestry, is Kasina. Okay. They came from like my village, Agai. Mm -hmm. My house, I, I mean, from Malababa's house, and Malababa is a student of uh, a disciple of uh, Usman Dan okay. that came to and uh, settled there. Okay. So we are in Malababa's house. Okay. You know? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way, we are part Fulani, part mm. Nupe. Okay. Yes. Because I asked that question because you see, identity changes. Yes. But if we look at our history and culture, that's why Aquaria TV focuses on history, art, and culture. Mm. You know, looking at our histories and culture, we can trace where we come from and where, yes. how united we have been. Yes, and if we go how back linked. far enough, we find that, that we are all the same. We yes. are like literally the same yes. culture, just over time as we are settling, we now adopt yes. what we are to fit our environment. Yes. So, what do you think as an artist we should do, especially artists in contemporary times? As artists, we, uh, we are supposed to we are supposed to tackle those issues. We cannot just keep. Uh, we cannot just keep quiet and let the narrative run. You know, let people just come to their own conclusions. Like what I'm doing, I'm trying to make people see where uh, the real Fulani, not what you hear in the media. So I think it's the onus is on other writers and the poets. They should do that as well. They should let people know, and they should also remind people of the. Uh, the good cultures that we have. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are some aspects of our traditions that are not good that they should should be should not be revived. Mm -hmm. Like you know the 
maybe female genital mutilation. That one is not good. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the uh, killing of twins yeah. by some cultures. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, this, uh, this other one that they make women, uh, maybe a widow, mm -hmm. to drink her husband's yeah. bath water. So, mm -hmm. Some things like that should of obviously die down. Yeah. But then the good ones, like, you know, the respect that we give each other. Children these days, they don't even respect. Have you noticed students? They, they don't respect elders the way the people in the past. Like, in one of the things I love about Nupe culture, if you see a Nupe person working, at least in the village, it still happens. Anywhere they meet each other, they must kneel down and greet each other. Even if young children mm. do that, not just adults. Mm. Children greet each other, adults greet each other, and they must always go down, mm. give each other full respect. Mm. You don't see that in yeah. towns, yeah. you know? Cultures like this are very important. Yeah. You see Yoruba people, when they are greeting, they yeah. go down, yeah. they show respect, yeah. you know? Things like that. Yeah. But Even the know, Japanese. The Japanese yes, even. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Of course, like things like bowing down, yeah. like for a Muslim, it's actually, it's not good to bow to another human being, but like kneeling down to show respect is okay, you know? Don't talk back at uh, elders. elders, you know? We respect them, you know? Treat them kindly. Things like that are uh, disappearing. Why? Because we are adopting foreign cultures. One of, I think one of the worst things that colonizers did to us, one of the most terrible thing that they did to us is to make us look down on our own culture yeah. you know yeah. and think their own is better mm. sure you said ah colonization happened you know hundreds of years ago blah blah it's actually still happening mm. it's still happening except it's not they are not here using guns and weapons no yeah. they are using television they are using internet they are using their music yeah. you know most uh, most uh, Africans now don't even like wearing traditional. Mm. In fact, if you go to an office, when they say corporate, they mean suit. Yeah. Why on earth must suit be corporate here? Yeah. It's not our culture. Yeah. Our own traditional outfit, when you wear them, they look better than this suit. Yeah. But if you wear it and go, for example, a bank or a law office, they will not allow you to work like that. You must go and dress in the colonizer, uh, colonizer's outfit. Uh, you know, it's very bad. Yeah. Our food, you know. Uh, like uh, on the on the day we did book reading, the the director of ERC she says something. It sounds funny, but it's true. She said, "Why are we even even in school? We are teaching uh, we are teaching their own history. Mm. Do you know they have cancelled yeah. our own history and now teaching history yeah. of British history of yeah. this and that. Yeah. And even like even from nursery school, what do they teach them? A for apple, B mm -hmm. for banana. Why? Why can't it be A for akara? <laughs> B for beans? Is it bad? Is this uh, now people are packaging all these things? They're packaging all these things. If you see all this curriculum and the rest, they are packaging them yeah. and people are buying them. If you go abroad now, if you see the price they'll put on curriculum, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you know, it's all packaging. Yeah. They package themselves very well, but we, we don't. And because we fail to do that, we are not looking down on our own culture and it's very bad. You know? Thank you so much, Aliza. <laughs> I can feel your passion and uh, <laughs> we really wish you the best with the. Uh, Fanta, and um, I can see that since it has entered into a second edition, there may be 10 more editions, and uh, we pray all the best for it. Um, um, thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. And thank you for staying with us on Aquaya TV. Please continue being with us. If you're on YouTube, there is a whole playlist um, for different shows that you can watch. We talk a lot with artists and writers. Please share these videos that's the best way the easiest way you can support the work we're doing and i really commend you for being with us thank you